to an angry draw the church. Today, we painted a picture of a huge tower in France. says that you haven't seen Paris until you've walked along the River Seine. Or played Longet. That's our friend Jean-Marc. He's an artist. Jean-Marc said he'd take us around Paris to show us some of the things he likes to paint. Jean-Marc, what's that painting of? I'm painting over there. Notre oh, Dame. Yeah. See, look, Notre Dame, people taking some pictures. You want me to draw a picture of you? Yeah. Yeah? Now? So yeah. Let's, let's go. Don't move. It was really hard to sit still. Especially for you, Rosie. I guess it's easier yeah. to draw a building. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When people go get a big, so, big you, you, you can speak. You can speak. <laughs> <laughs> Try, don't move. <laughs> You're going to eat all the flies. <laughs> <laughs> John Mark's a funny guy. And he's a really good artist. He must really like to paint. Do you want to know what things that I um, like to paint? Yeah, tell me. Um, princesses and... I notice. Heart and flowers. Flowers. I like to draw the Titanic and walruses. Titanic and? Walruses. Which is? Um, tusks. Okay. <clears throat> Time to draw Jean-Marc. This is fun just drawing like this. Do you know you're having lots of fun? Yeah. That's my picture, Jean-Marc. Want to see mine? It's sticking out your tongue. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this picture. Like that? Yeah. Can we see the Eiffel Tower next? But before, we're going to have a breakfast and then take the boat. Two okay. plans, pack up for stuff. This is going to be a good day. We passed by Notre Dame Cathedral on our way to... Breakfast! There it is! Notre Dame means Our Lady in English. It's one of the oldest churches in Paris. Look, who's there? Jean-Marc brought us to a cafe for breakfast. You are these artists. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Allez, bien, bien, bien. They make crepes here. Crepes are like thin pancakes that you put all sorts of stuff in. Cool. Uh, oh la la. Allez. No problem, huh? OK? Extra okay. chocolate. Yeah. Ah, bravo. Allez, maintenant, qu'est-ce qu'on fait là? Now it looks like a burrito. Open, open your bag. <laughs> Bravo, allez! Ooh la la, that's French for wow. Yeah. All right. The crepes were really good with chocolate. You full of moustache. Moustache? Look, moustache chocolat, moustache. Moustache chocolat? There, there. Huh? Moustache chocolat? Oh, chocolate moustache. We go on the boat now? Yeah, let's okay, go. Okay, let's go. After our breakfast, we took a boat to get to the Eiffel Tower. That was a long, long, long boat. Two, let's take some pictures. Okay. On the way to the Eiffel Tower, we went under 20 bridges. Come on. Fromage is French for cheese. Uh -huh. Look. Woo. And this one? This one is a museum. Huge. Yeah. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. You see the big clock? The Eiffel 
Castle Tower was built over a hundred years ago. It's 81 stories tall and weighs 7,300 tons. Look, there it is! There. You see? It's one of the most famous things to see in Paris. Time to paint our tower. What are these hats called? Called a beret. Do you sketch it first and then paint it? Yeah. Okay, so. What are we drawing? Eiffel Tower. Okay. Wonderful. Here. Yeah. It's perfect. Good job, Rosie. It's kind of relaxing just sitting here painting. You enjoy painting like that, aquarelle? Yeah. yeah. Do you know any French songs? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which one? Le tête est par genou pié, genou pié, genou pié. Le tête est par genou pié, les yeux, les yeux, la bouche, la nez. There's lots of amazing stuff to paint in Paris. Do you want to climb on the Eiffel Tower now? Yeah. Well, pick me up, golden hand. See you on our next adventure. Bye. Italy is full of art. It has lots of statues, pretty buildings, and huge fountains. Today we're looking at art in Italy's capital city. Hello. Called Rome. Come on. Aw, Rosie. Mom. We drove to meet our friend Vincenzo. He's a sculptor. I want a kissy. No. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Wow, it looks like one of your dolls. Hey. I love my doll. Good for you. Yay. Look at all those stairs. Let's go see Vincenzo. That's Vincenzo. Come on, Rosie, let's go. I'm Vincenzo. Hi. Vincenzo. Hi. This is pretty big. It's the Trevi Fountain. Do you like it? Yeah. The Trevi Fountain is also called the Fountain of the Sea. Is that because there's lots of water? Probably. Oh, not so big, but I make something like this. Because I'm a sculptor. What kind of sculptures do you make? Oh, I can show you it. A thing that we're going to do later. You make chalk. It's gypsum, alabaster. It kind of looks like the ground right here. Yeah, the same thing. I mold it and we we'll do it again, but together. Do you throw coins in there and make bushes? Yeah. That's yours? Vincenzo, how do you uh, count to three in Italian? Uno, due, tre. Uno, Uno due, tre. tre. I wish for a... Uh... Don't tell, won't come true. Before we meet our own sculptures, we explore more Rome. While we were walking around, we found Pinocchio, which was written by an Italian writer. It's about a boy who was sculpted out of wood. Pinocchio. Oh! <laughs> hey, look at that! In the story, Pinocchio was made by a woodcutter named Geppetto. There was a Geppetto here, too. He let us help him make a Pinocchio. Ciao, Geppetto. Oh, ciao, Julie. Ciao, Rossi. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfetto. <laughs> hello. 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 Ciao. Ciao. Yeah. Ciao means hello and goodbye in Italian. How much Pinocchios do you make each day? Quanti Pinocchio fai ogni giorno? Ogni giorno, three, four. 
three, three or, or four. four. Okay. See that? Wow. Oh <laughs> Took a break and ate some pizza. Done. We went to a piazza, which is like a big open space. It'd be pretty hard to not step on a crack here. <laughs> this piazza is full of art. Like that's a me. nice picture of the Colosseum. Can we get our portraits done? Yes, sure. Sit down. Hello. Hello. Hi. Is it better if we stay still? Yeah, it's better. You have to. Because the more you test up, the more it's going better. Do you want to know what I like to draw? Yeah, what's going on? Cars. Oh. Do you want to know what I like to draw? Yeah, of course. Flowers. Oh. I hope that you like. <laughs> Trying to make our own sculptures. How do we start our sculpture? With the clay. That's Julian. That's one for you. Whoa. I'll put, three. I'll put it right here. That's yours? Ah. Can I use one of these? Yes, why not? We pushed the clay on the ground so it would take the shape of the cobblestones. Put plaster over it and let it dry. <laughs> so let's wash up, and we'll come back when it will be, when it will be dry. Okay. I think they're ready. Time to peel it out. And you give me this. Oh yeah. No, not you. Yeah. I made a feather fossil. Enchanto, look. I made a little. You can see the bird? Yeah. The bird feather, I pressed it on. Wow. It's like a fossil now. We had a great time seeing and making art in Italy. Hi, Vincenzo. Hi. Before you go, do you want to go for a bike ride? OK, let's go. Let's go. I can help steer. Aw. I can be faster than Italian. Più veloce. Più veloce. Più veloce. Nobody see, nobody young. Well, pick me up, go in hand. She wanted an adventure. you to run. It took a long plane ride to get to England. Super long. Then a long car ride to get out of the city and into the countryside. Super long car ride. The car ride was a little boring. That's because you are ignoring me. You're hard to ignore, Rosie. See what I mean? Lots of hotels. <laughs> Finally, we arrived at New Forest. But this forest wasn't new. It was over 1,000 years old and had tons of animals. That's where we met John. He showed us some of his animal friends. Oh, Sammy's all right. That's the hill there on that side of the gate. What kind of animals are these? Right, these are actually red deer. And uh, they're all girls today. <laughs> Oh, hello, Rosie. <laughs> this is Rosie. You, you know how you can tell who Rosie is? She's got big ears. We have the same name. We do. There's Rosie the deer and Rosie the little mm. person. <laughs> yeah. Nice name, isn't it? Have you been to the New Forest before? No. No? Well, as I say, it's been around since William the Conqueror, which is 1060. It was almost a 1,000 years ago. Yeah, that long ago. And some king came over and he said, it's that nice countryside, I'm going to have it. So he nicked it, OK? And then he turned it into his playground. What does Nick then mean? Uh, stole it. The people who owned it, he says, that's too nice for you. I'm having it. I wish the king had Nick the bees. Julian hates bees. It's all right, Julian. It's all right, Julian. It's all right, I'll wipe off. Just... Yeah. There we are. There we are. After your lime top. OK. I hate bees. Uh, that was a wasp, actually, so there we are. <laughs> John asked us if we wanted to help feed the deer. They eat grain. Rosie's a little scared of big animals. I'm scared. But not gorillas. Yeah. Okay, Rosie. 
If you don't want to feed her, just throw it on the floor. There we go. Now we give Rosie extra food. She does. Well, she's in charge. She's the top deer, and so she says to all the others, behave yourselves, I want my share first. Yeah, she's the boss. OK. So should we have a look at my other little friends we've got? Yeah! Yeah. Some of the animals in the new forest were brought here because they were hurt. When they get better, John returns them to the wild. Off to find more animals! <laughs> Just round the corner is where my otter friends live. Look at all the otters, Julian. Just follow Julian. Right, Julian, if you go to the right there. They were super quick. They kind of made me nervous. What do they like to eat? They like to eat fish. So should we give them some breakfast? We do like to feed them, Julian. OK. Yeah? I need but you don't gloves. want smelly hands, do you? <laughs> no. Ugh. We put on our gloves so our hands wouldn't stink from the smelly shrimp and fish heads. Yuck. Eat up, guys. Right, he keeps moving. That's excellent, that one. Nice in the sunshine. Where's he gone now? That's Rusty the fox. Just before we met him, something stung him. Poor Rusty. John said we could give him a treat to make him feel better. Rusty loves jam. Do you want the knife or the spoon? Yeah. I'll have the knife. It's safer for Rosie to have a spoon. Very sensible. This is his special treat. It actually hurt his leg at the moment. Ooh. Well, he's, he's actually been stuck. Yeah? Like a, From what? Li like a little bee, like a wasp. Rusty. OK, don't spill it. Do they eat us? Foxes don't eat people, no. He's in there. Come on. Come on, Rosie. Rosie. Okay. so that we wouldn't startle Rusty. You crouch down here, and here you've got but a I... big spoonful. Hold it nice and tight. I was so a bit nervous about being Rusty. But I wasn't. Thanks, Julian. I think he does. It's strange, isn't he? He's looking at... Hey. Before we go... Um, can we take a picture of the other fox? OK, Rusty's girlfriend. Yeah. Shall we see if we can find her? Is that his girlfriend? It is, it is, but she's a bit nervous. She's a bit like you, Rosie. She's a bit scared. There were so many animals in the new forest. Oh, this is that? different. Yeah. And it's Come different because he has poke. Holy cow. He gets, he gets, but she's got spots, yes. Whoa, whoa. I wanted to try feeding the deer myself. Have you fed a horse before? No. No? What you've always got to do is keep a flat hand like that. She was a bit busy, though. No. No, I think she's still eating her cornflakes. Is he scared? That's He's a bit me. nervous. I was a bit nervous, too. I'm going to try and feed dog. OK, put your hand nice and low. Huh? There we are. Oh. Good job, Rosie. We made a lot of new animal friends in England. Hey, John, John. Hi, kids. Before you go, remember how I said it was a king's playground? Yeah. Well, he had some wild ponies. You must go and have a look at the wild ponies, OK? Reach out my hand. Is the king still on these ponies? No, it's changed now. And these have all got their own owners. And then certain people own the land. OK, but it's all called the new forest. No, I don't have any any ponies. It took a long plane ride to get to England. 
in a big plane. Then a short drive out of the city to Hever Castle. That's where Queen used to live. Hever Castle has lots of hedges cut out to look like other things. That's a rabbit. And that's a snail. They even have a maze made of hedges. That's where we met Adrian. He's a maze expert. But uh, what's right that uh, big hole right there? Or is that a pond? That is, that isn't a pond, that's a moat. It's oh, water it's all the way around oh, the castle. So if you wanted to capture the castle, you had to get across the moat. So there's only one way in. So if it's just closing, if you're a high enough jumper, you could jump on and then it'll flick you could in. Could you jump across that? <laughs> I wish. Yeah, have you ever been in a maze? Do you know what a maze um, is? Well, I've been in it with my pencil. <laughs> with your pencil, yeah? If I would make a maze, I would. When people go in, um, uh, the part where you're supposed to end, it'll trap, and then the part where, where you get in, trapped too. So then they can't get out. So it changes the design when you're inside it? Yeah, I would have a boat a whole bunch of animals thrown in there, wild animals, <laughs> meat eaters. Yes. And then attack. I bet then you would find your way out because you would be scared. You'd be very motivated. Adrian had a wooden maze for us to try first. Let's go. OK. This maze is two levels high. Come on, Rosie. We're going backwards, just to make sure you're going doing it right. It's fun. Are you okay, Rosie? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, it's a wiggly one. Look at that slide, Rosie. So then how do we get up there? I don't know, let's go this way. Come on. Run, 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 run. This is a long walk. Climb, isn't it, Rosie? Yeah. We made it! Well, sort of. Time to draw our own maze. How do you draw a maze? Ooh. Ow. Well, you need a large sheet of paper and a pencil or a pen. Or a marker. And off we go. Can you show us one of the mazes that you've done? Yeah, I've done a whole book of mazes. Adrian has made some of the biggest mazes in the world. Hey, is this a baseball field one? Well, that one's in the shape of a tortoise. Have you ever won any awards for your mazes? Yes, I've um, broken six Guinness World Records for bigger and bigger mazes. Here's one which has double-decker bridges, one path oh. and then a bridge and a bridge on top of the bridge. Oh, my gosh. Looking like a... What's that look like? A dinosaur. Hey, Jean, I'm going to try and draw one for you. Go on, then. Okay. That'd be very nice. Both are amazed for Adrian to try to solve. Oh, that's looking pretty done. cool, that one. You've done one, have you? That's pretty cool, though, isn't it? It goes all over the place. It goes around and around. Yeah. Eww. And it all comes back again. Good luck, Adrian. Mine is harder. No, it wasn't. He really is a maze expert. Hi. Good job. Hi. Good job. That's a great one. Wow. <laughs> Are you ready for a real maze? Yeah. Maze time! On your mark. Let's get set. Go! go. that kings and queens used to play a sport called croquet. People still play it today. Adrian took us to meet his friend Oliver to try it out. What is croquet? Well, it's a game where you go round and hit balls through hoops, like a like maze. That? Yeah, kind of hoops. What's this what I'm holding? That is called a mallet. You use a mallet to hit your croquet ball. You swing back. Very nice. We decided to play a game of croquet together. It was a lot of fun, because you got to hit the balls with a big stick. 
Good shot, Oliver. Good game! We had an amazing time in England. Hey, Adrian. Hi, guys. Before you go, would you like to try just one more maze? Yeah! OK, Get let's go. Get stuff, Rosie. Welcome to the water maze. Good thing we did this last, because it started to rain. I don't know why the maze work. Well, sometimes where you put your foot makes the water come and get you wet. Where's the end of the maze? Well, the maze, the goal is in the middle here. And if you're clever, you can get right to the top. Reach out my hand. Oh, let's say, oh, let tell you to run. Nobody see, nobody young. Well, pick me up with golden hands. I'm gonna draw a picture of you juggling, Joy. Today we explored a medieval festival in France. France! and drove out to the French countryside. Bye, Eiffel Tower! Once a year, Brie Comte Robert... That's a small town! Rosie! Once a year, Brie Comte Robert holds a medieval festival. In a real castle. That's our friend Christiane. She knows a lot about medieval times. Um, is this sort of a medieval festival? Yes, it is, and we have it each year, once a year in the beginning of October. What kind of things are there to do at the festival? How oh, there's juggling, there are birds of prey, people producing candlesticks in the old-fashioned way. Julian, do you know what medieval time means? Um, b back then? Like back then when they used to joust and all that? and where there used to be knights. Is there any knights here today? Oh, yes, there are. I really hope we get to see some knights. I really hope we get to try some jousting. In town, a lot of kids got dressed up in medieval costumes for the festival. So we dressed up, too. Julian was right, medieval times were way back then. Like hundreds of years ago, when there were moats and kings and queens and Jugglers! How do they hear that? In medieval times, people used to watch jugglers for fun. It's still fun to watch today. That's amazing. Rosie and I wanted to give it a try. We started with just one ball, though. One. Yes! <laughs> Juggling, we went inside the castle to see some huge birds. That's where we met Michel and his yeah. owl. He's very, very nice. His, oh, his name princess. is Max. Max is an eagle owl. He's very, very nice. He's very, very nice. Michel and his wife have tons of birds. They have caracaras, vultures, and falcons. Hi, Max. So, and why are they called birds of prey? Because they hunt for food using their talons and beak. Very good owl, eh? <laughs> so we try to with later on with the vultures. You have vultures? Yes. They're huge birds. Oh yes. So what's a vulture? So a huge bird sometimes can fly into the mountains. Do you want to see the vulture? Yeah. But in the medieval times, people used to use birds of prey to help them hunt. They use gloves to protect their arms from the bird's claws. But sometimes the birds just wanted to play. But you silly birds. These are, they are stupid birds, vultures. They're stupid. 
Misha let me try the glove on so I could catch the vulture too. Misha taught his birds not just to land on people's arms, but their heads too. I know exactly who it should be. Okay. Yeah. I know who Misha's landed on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Vulture head, Mommy! <laughs> I wish I had my own vulture. There were even more birds outside the castle. Ducks. And the market where the townspeople sold jewelry, games, and armor. Lucy, do you know what your favorite medieval weapon is? What's a weapon? You can choose out of these. Then we met a candle maker. He makes them the old-fashioned, medieval way. On descend et on remonte tout de suite. We want to try for ourselves. This is heavy, Joel. Okay. Allez. Christian told us that L.A. means go in French. Yep. One, two, three, allez. Yep. Bravo! C'est bien. Bravo. Bye. Ah, that's for you. Thank you. Look at that. In medieval times, people played music on animal horns. <laughs> they were hard to play. Uh. Oh! Picture time! Awesome night. Ah! And with the knights came toasting. Time! Knights used to practice jousting just like this. Charge! Seeing how people lived in medieval times was an awesome adventure. Hey, Christian. Do you want to watch a medieval parade? Yeah! Well, pick me up with golden hand. How's your really old chip coming along, Sam? You doing a brown? Yep. Looks really cool. Today we explored a really old ship in Sweden. Sweden! I would like to reach out my hand. Oh, miss sail. Oh, miss hell you to roll. We started our adventure in Stockholm. That's the capital of Sweden. Sweden has a lot of water around it, so lots and lots of boats like to visit. Lots and lots and lots of boats. We went to see one of the oldest ships in Sweden. Do you remember its name, Sam? Oh! There you go. <laughs> oh. You broke it. <laughs> now I gotta duct tape it. That same is broken. Now I can duct tape it. Hmm. As I was saying, inside that museum is a 400-year-old ship called the Vasa. That's our friend Sandra. She's gonna take us to the Vasa on a taxi boat. Hi, Hi Sandra. Sandra. Hi. Welcome to Stockholm. Oh. <laughs> 
Here we go. Goodbye, Goodbye Palace. Palace. Hey, Sandra, can you bring the dog over here? See? He's very used to ships. He's so cute. High five, first start. Yank. The amusement park had a Viking ship ride. Cool. Um, are we going to go under that bridge? Yep. The boat looks a bit too tall. Aha, uh -huh, but you'll see. Let's see if we make it. Uh, 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 let's see. Does it look good? Yeah. Yeah? We're already half sure? under it. Ah, and we're riding right under the royal sign there. and it was huge. And when it sailed on its maiden voyage, right out here from where we came from, outside of the palace, it came to right about here, and then it sunk. It was a complete fiasco, and everyone was standing there waving, and the ship just sunk in front of their eyes. Luckily for us, they took the ship out of the water and put it in a museum. Looks like a pretty big museum. Yep. Cool. I wonder if that's in the water. Well, maybe you should see. Oh, there's a little boat right there. They had a model of the Vasa to show what it looked like when it was first built. But this is what it looked like after being in the water for hundreds of years. That's Fred. He showed us around the Vasa. What are those faces? They're meant to scare people off, scare away bad spirits. It's an old tradition uh, on ships. The sailors are very superstitious, you know. Why do they need so many cannons? Well, it's a warship. It was meant to defend other ships, and then this ship would uh, protect the ships full of soldiers. Fred took us on board the Vasa. We had to wear special covers on our shoes so we wouldn't break the ship. Like you broke your whoopee cushion? I can duct tape it. Yeah, where are we going first? I got my flashlight. We're going to go all the way aft to the stern, and then we're going to go up the ladders to the deck where the admiral would stand when he was commanding the ship. So, Sam, it's kind of like being in the pool, no running. Exactly. Where do they steer the ship? Well, we're going to go right past there. And well, actually, I'll show you, and you can, you can try. Is that a ladder? That's a ladder. That's an old one, so we can't climb on that one. We're going to go up this one. But see, there's two steps here on top of this seat. So this is where people could sit and watch things happening, officers mostly. The sailors didn't get to sit down. They had to work. Whoa, Sam, this is a great view. This is what the admiral would see when the ship was sailing. And he, he, from up here, he could see everything happening on board this ship. And then he could look out to see the other ships in the fleet. Then we looked inside the ship. Do you know what this deck was for? Cannon. This deck and the next deck, both the fourth floor and the third floor, were just cannon. There were 24 big cannon on this deck and 24 on the deck below. Time to learn how to steer the ship. OK, you want to see where the ship is steered? Yeah. You would stand on this step. Yeah. And then you would hold the stick, called the whip staff, in your hand. And then you'd actually be looking out that door. Is that a fireplace? No, that's a bed. There, were a, there was a bunk on each side. What do you mean? There was a bed in there? Yeah, you would have a mattress and a blanket inside there. And if you wanted if you wanted privacy, then you closed the door. Oh, in that little thing? Yeah, you slept in a box. Cannonball! There. Why is there a string there? OK, this rope is for hauling closed the door, the gun port lid, that would let you close the gun port. And the, the cannon would poke out here, but when you were sailing, you had to close the door so the water wouldn't come. And that's why the ship sank, because they didn't close the door when they went sailing. That one is? This one is. We had a great time exploring an old ship in Sweden. Hi, Sandra. Hi. So before you go, are you ready to go on that Viking ship ride? Yeah, let's yeah. go, Sam. <laughs> Well, pick me up, Stay on adventure. Oh, Hey, Hey, Molly, 
us to know about our adventures today. I'm going to draw a bow and arrow. Today we were Vikings in Iceland. Oh wait, exclamation mark. things in Iceland that let you know that Vikings are a big part of the country. Like that Viking ship statue. The Vikings were sailors who rode around in huge ships. I win! Ah. Back there somewhere. <gasps> That's like nothing. That's like beautiful. Your big head is in the way though. Ooh. Are we here? We want to see an even cooler ship. It's a model of the ships the Vikings used to ride. It's called the Islandinger, which is Icelandic for Icelander. Molly, look at the Viking chip. I'm gonna jump over all of them. I am, don't worry. What do they look like inside? That's our friend Gunnar. He built the Islandinger. Hello. Who were the Vikings? They were peaceful people. They were farmers looking for new land to live on. Did the Vikings find Iceland? Yes, uh, about 20,000 people moved over to Iceland. We are still here, yes. So you're a Viking? Um, you can say so, yes. Time for a closer look. Come on, grab your backpack. The Vikings came to Iceland over a thousand years ago on a big boat like this. Asha. OK, I'm good. OK. What are these? These are the ones uh, which uh, holds the mast in place. Uh, and this is a piece of wood here to, uh, to strengthen the ones. Three. Yeah. So it would be one person who were uh, yelling, Roa, Roa. It's like row, row. So we'll all yell Roa when we row? Roa. 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 Pull it in. Whoa, Ro heavier than I thought. Whoa. Yes. Roa. Whoa. What was that? Roa. 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 Come on, Molly, Roa. How long will they do this for? They will do this uh, for hours. Sometimes. You want to uh, visit uh, my friends at uh, Eristair? Yeah, but what yeah. do they do there? Uh, play some games. Bless Gunnar. Bless means goodbye in Icelandic. Gunnar's friend Siggy loves playing Icelandic games like arm wrestling and bows and arrows. Hi, Siggy! Hi. Everyone was wearing old Viking clothes. Now are you at a Viking house? This is a typical Viking house as the Viking lived in. Do you live in here? Yeah, sometimes I live here, yes. Is that your daughter? Yes, that's my daughter. She's playing the bow and arrow. You will get to play bow and arrow later in all kinds of Viking games. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's a little cool. OK, then I shall give you just Viking clothes to wear, because they are okay. very warm. Molly and I got to change into clothes that the Vikings used to wear. Ta-da! We look like Vikings. Oh, yeah. Look exactly as a Viking. Look. Oh, did they lose a horn? This is Sunna, and she will teach you how to shoot a bow and an arrow. The Vikings used to use bows and arrows to hunt. It's a lot harder than it looks. Oh, oh that, that wasn't very good. Oh, Oof. don't hit the house, Sam. Time for some arm wrestling. In this game, you have to pull the other person off the bouncy log. <laughs> we have to fix that? <laughs> Viking stuff? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Ah. 
tahu. Fight! Yes, don't give up. Yes. Okay. Champion! Winner! Let's go inside and make some bread, Ziggy. Okay. Winner goes first! Okay. It was really warm inside the house. What is this room? This room, it's a typical Viking house on the inside. Siggy oh. asked us if we wanted to help him make some bread. So we mixed some ingredients and made shapes out of the dough. I'm making a star shape. Shape. I'm making a weird thing. I'm actually gonna make a heart. While the bread cooked, we'd listen to some music. Raven green, oh raven Oh thou Time to try our bread. Yeah. Hot? 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 Yes. It's not so hot. They ever put marshmallows over the fire? No. Not on the wagon, it is. Oops. They didn't do. Can we make a bit more of this? Yes. We had the best time being Vikings in Iceland. Hi, Siggy. Hi, kids. Before you go, do you want, want, want to play one more Viking game? Yeah, yeah come on, Molly, just leave your stuff. Blind our eyes and then play, try to hit each other with this, with this pillow. today. Okay. Julie, look at my gingerbread house. Oh, that's really good. Today we learned about fairy tales in Germany. Well, pick me up with golden hand. Oh, let's sail. Oh, let's tell you to run. Are we there yet? Roll the adventure. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, an evil witch cast a spell on the townspeople of Fusen and covered their hills with a blanket of snow. start to our story, huh, Rosie? Sure is. That's a friend, Cordula. She's a storyteller. Do you want to know what my fairy fairy tale is? Yes, please, tell me. Three little pigs. Three little pigs, I know this fairy tale too. Do you want to know what mine is? Yes, please. It is Hansel and Gretel. I like to tell that story. Is there a lot of castles in Germany? We have a lot of castles. Especially in this area, there are a lot of castles built everywhere. Can we get closer to one of the castles? Yes, and I have a very special way to get there. Before we took our special way to the castle, we threw some snowballs in the water. I also learned how to count to three in German. Eins, Eins zwei, drei. I made the biggest splash. <laughs> I wonder what the special way to the castle is, Julian. to ride that carriage? Yes, absolutely. We ride this carriage all the way to the castle. Can we meet the horses first? Yes, we can. Let me introduce you to my friend Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, I help you. Joe let us feed his horses a snack. Okay. It's nice. You want me to tell you the story of Hansel and Gretel now? Yeah. Okay. Once upon a time, a long, long, long time ago, in a really great, dark, and a little bit mysterious forest, there lived two children, a boy and a girl. 
And the boy's name was Hansel, and the girl's name was Gretel. Was Gretel, right. Gretel told us how the woodcutter was so poor, he had to leave his kids, Hansel and Gretel, in the woods. The parents left them? They really left them in the forest. Hansel and Gretel couldn't find their way home. Then did they find the gingerbread house? It had sugar windows, a candy cane door, and a chocolate roof. But in the house, there was a mean witch. Great children. She ate children? She did. Lucky for Hansel and Gretel, they were able to escape the witch. I think I see the castle. That's a really pretty castle. Have you ever made a gingerbread house? Actually, after we see the castle, we can go to town and there's a bakery which makes gingerbread houses. And maybe I can go there. Picture time! Look how beautiful the castle is. Say Hansel and Gretel. Hansel, Hansel and Gretel. Gretel. Say gingerbread house. Gingerbread, gingerbread house. house. After we took our pictures, we went down into the town to make our gingerbread house. Right in here, guys. Bye. 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 That's Norbert and Marcus. They're expert gingerbread house makers. Hi. Hi, Marcus. And then we have two hats for you. Oh, cool. So, OK. Then we start. Wow, they're big. <laughs> uh, chocolate. Is that all chocolate? That's all chocolate, yeah? <sighs> all? That's a lot. And fluid. I'll help hold it. Yeah. I don't believe chocolate could be used like a glue. I know, that's amazing. The chefs melted the chocolate so we could stick the pieces of gingerbread house together. When it hardens, it really was like glue. Time to decorate. Look at all the candy we had to choose from to decorate. Marcus used the frosting to keep the candy in place. I'll grab the sprinkles. Ooh, more sprinkles. I love the sprinkles. More chocolates. Ooh, buddy, need ooh, baba. That's the best part. I wonder if there's enough sprinkles. Three. Okay, that's enough. Oh, this is the best Wait. part. Okay, that's enough, Rosie. Dude, let's not make the grandma. Let's make the witch from Hansel and the Grandma. And Greta? Yeah. Okay. And here's the kids. Right there? Yeah, yes. in front of the house. Okay, I think our house is done. It is done! Bonito! We had a tasty time learning about fairy tales in Germany. Hi, Cordula. Hi. Hi. Before you go, can I see your gingerbread house? Sure. I would like to reach out my hand. Oh, I've got all the sprinkles. Oh, tell you to run. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, pick me up. Go see you on our next adventure. Oh, Bye. Let's journal about our adventures today. Today. Today we painted eggs in Ukraine.
Some of the roads in Ukraine are made out of stones. We play tiptoe across them. Don't step on a crack, Sam. Oh, I won! We took a big elevator train thingy to get to the top of the hill. It's called a funicular, Sam. They should call it funicular. Oh my gosh, buddy. You think they have a playground? Maybe. You can see the whole city from the windows. Keep up, Dad. Outside the elevator train, there is a big blue church. Like, how are we going to do that? <laughs> I'm really just scared. It's called St. Michael's Cathedral. All the steeples looked like they were made out of gold. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! I, I think I see a playground. <laughs> That's Christina and Sofia. We asked them to play with us. You want to play tag? In Ukrainian, tag is called lava. Uh-oh, one on one. Holy. Sofia was a fast runner, but not fast enough. Sofia told us about a market close by where a lot of Ukrainian artists go to show their art. She said she'd ask her mom if we could go with her. Yes, do you want to go to the market? Yes. yes. Oh, great. I think you're going to enjoy it there. The market was back down the road by that big blue church. They had some pretty cool art. Did you paint that? Which one's your favorite? 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 Which one's Egg? Yes. Molly, do you want to paint eggs later? Yeah! Whoa, are you okay, Sam? Egg painting is an old tradition in Ukraine. There's some more eggs. There are a lot of eggs to choose from in the market. What's your favorite holiday? Summer? That's Summer. A, that's a it's season. not a holiday, honey. It's Christmas or Easter. Ah, Easter. Why do you like Easter? Because I need to take eggs and I need to find them and I always have more eggs than Christina. <laughs> I find more eggs than Sam too. Do you want to paint eggs now? Yeah, yeah let's go! We couldn't wait to paint eggs. Is it in there? Yeah, there's a classroom there for the museum. Today, Oksana Bilous, who's a wonderful artist, is going to teach us how it's done. Uh, how do you get the yolk out of the egg? To get the yolk out, you use a little stick to poke a hole in the egg. Then you use a machine that makes a funny noise to suck it out. First, you divide it in half. Time to pencil on your pattern. Good drawing, Sam. Then you use a candle to melt wax on your pencil marks. Be careful, buddy. I am. Oh, the part that is white, draw. take the part where you want it to stay white. What's your egg doing, Molly? It's kind of like using a pencil crayon, but with wax in it. Yeah. The best part was dumping the eggs in it. That gets them all colorful. Let's all blow out our candles on the count of three. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> that was first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Why? 
word. It's supposed to blow up. Not over top of it, Sam. And don't go <laughs> like you're kissing the candle. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> we had a great time with our new friends in Ukraine. Hey, Sophia. Hi. Hey, Christina. Before you go, you want to play with these toys? He's playing a movie. Dun-dun! You can have this one. Okay, one sec. Do you want our next adventure? Are you still buying you? Papa. in the back. Okay. It's pretty windy. That's for sure. They already played on, on the top of the mountain in Germany. In the snow! All the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. Germany! Would you like to reach out my hand? Oh, let's say, oh, let's tell you to run. Nobody see, nobody young. Well, pick me up with golden hand. Oh, let's sail. Oh, let's tell you to run. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Roll the rancher. Today we're going skiing. But there wasn't any snow on the ground. So we had to go to the top, top, top of a mountain. The highest mountain in Germany. That's our friend Frida. She's a ski instructor. How are you going to ski down here with no snow? Well, you see right here the Zugspitz, what's the highest mountain in Germany, and you see the snow, and there we go skiing. We're going to ski on the top of that yes, mountain? Yes, we're going to ski on top of it. There is a big ski area. It's the snow, lots of snow, because we ski on a glacier right there. Do we have to walk all the way up that no. mountain? No, see, there comes the cable car. And we will catch the cable car in a few minutes. And the cable car takes you all the way up to the mountain right here. See how fast? Yeah. Yeah. Can we go now? Sure, we go. Let's go to the cable car. Um, Frida, I know how to go faster and slower in skiing. You do. To go to go faster, you need to bend down a little. Correct. And to go slower, you, you need to stand up. And how are you going to stop? We just fall over. Oh, so I have to show you how to stop up there. That's for sure. But sometimes it's fun to fall in the snow, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. if it's deep. So, let's go in. Be careful, it's a step here. This is huge. Uh, this is huge, huh? We're going to go really high. We go very high. Here we go. Here we go. We're already so high. Kind of feels like we're flying. Yeah, like in a little... In a little plane, huh? All the trees look like Christmas trees. Yes, yes, because it was snowing last night. Holy cow! I couldn't believe how high we were getting. Look how high we are, Julian. Yeah. It feels like you can reach out and touch yes. the mountains. Are we above the clouds? Yes, yes, yes. At the top of the mountain, you can look out over Germany. Is that the top of Germany? This is the top of Germany. Julie, let's take some pictures. OK. Thank you. Let's, yeah. let's go skiing. It's frozen out there. We had to take a shorter cable car to get over to the ski slope. Oh, look at all those people skiing, Julian. Cool. It's skiing time! This mountain is called Zugspitze. That means train peak in German. People come from all over the world to ski here. I couldn't wait to try skiing. This was the first time I was old enough to do it. And now you step down with your heel. Click! How do you say thank you in German? Dankeschön. Thank you, Shin. We were ready to go skiing. Well, I was anyways. Whee! So, ski! 
Singing is kind of like the <laughs> Standing up. All you have to do is bend your knees and lean forward. Up I go! Your turn, Julian. I went a little higher. Right, push a little bit, and I'll make a turn. Julian's a good skier. Perfect! While we were practicing skiing, we met a dog named Leah. <laughs> She knew how to give high fives. Okay. And kisses. <laughs> and she could count too. <laughs> Throw it high, Julian. And her best trick? Catching snowballs in her mouth. Whoa, oh, that was a good one. Are you two having fun skiing on yeah, top yeah, of yeah. the such fits? Yeah. Yeah! Good. Really so funny. shall we go again? Yeah. I had a better idea. Maybe hot chocolate? Excellent. I went skiing on one of the bigger hills while Rosie and Mom had a snack. There we are. Are you hungry? Yeah. You're ready for a little lunch, huh? Yeah. yeah. I love apple strudel. And I love skiing. Whee! That was so much fun, Frida. Thank you. We'll never forget this. So, guten Appetit. Can I try? Wait. Playing on a mountain in Germany was really exciting. And tasty. Hi, Frida. You like to go with the debogging before you go? Well, pick me up. Daniel! Golden Hungary is a very old country. It's over 1,000 years old. For a long time, Hungary was ruled by kings and queens. I always wanted to be a queen. Me too. Today, we're going to explore Hungary's capital city, called Budapest. <laughs> it's a giant palace on top of a mountain. And it's where kings and queens used to live. That's our friend, Kathleen. She knows all about the palace. Hi, Hi Kathleen. Kathleen. How are you? <laughs> Forgive me if I... Hey. Um, how old is this palace? This palace is 800 years. 800 years old. That's really old. And do you know who lived in this castle? No. Queen. Yes, queens and the kings lived in this castle and they came here, they celebrated their life here. What's that fountain over there? This, this fountain is a very famous fountain. They call it the Matthias King Fountain. Yes. Is it because there's a king in there? Yes, exactly. That's the statue of Matthias. He became king of Hungary when he was only 14 years old. People make wishes at the fountain by rubbing the foot of the statue. Close your eyes. Oh no, just here. Close your eyes and wish. I wish I could become a queen. Me too. Kathleen said she could make our wishes come true. So she took us to meet her friend Balaj. That's Balaj. He's gonna show us the ceremony that queens took to become queens. We even got to dress up. Hi, Balaj. Hi, girls. So welcome to the Buddha Palace. This is the place which was the seat for the kings and queens, the royal family. Do you like that queen dresses? Oh yes, you girls look beautiful in these dresses. Would you like to be the queens of Hungary? Yes. yes. Cool. Do you know how to dance? Nope. I'm sure you do. I know hip hop. You know hip hop? Well, you know, back in the day it wasn't really hip hop, but why don't we mix it with a little hip hop? Renaissance and hip hop. Cool? 
Okay. And so, before we got crowned queen, Mama took us to meet his friend, Azotep. She's going to teach us an old dance that queens used to do. Huh? Ah, yes, the jumping. Come on. Come on, come. Mm-hmm. Yes, and stop. This dance has lots of bowing. And finish. One, two, three, four, four steps. And drive around. Okay, one, two, three, four. <laughs> First test, one, two, three, four, and here it is. Time for a crowning ceremony. Everyone bowed when we came in. We each got to have a pretend crown. And from this moment, you stand up. You show yourself to all the ladies in waiting. And now you are the Queen of Hungary. Do you, King uh, of Hungary, Matthias, wants your wife to be crowned as Queen of Hungary? Yes. Now, my queen, time to explore our kingdom. Outside the palace, we met a golden eagle, like the ones kings and queens used to keep as pets. How beautiful, shiny. Oh, try it. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. He tried to fly, you know. We also met a hawk. We got to hold it. We wore special gloves so we wouldn't get scratched. Feel so. How big, how large. Come on. You're under it. Look at this. You are protected. You would like to be protected too? Yes, okay, we go. With my umbrella. Then we went down a funicular, which is kind of like a train. It's up it goes up and down. This one goes from Buddha Palace all the way down to the river. Do you know how called the river? No. Danube. This is called Blue Danube. This is just a beautiful river. Danube! Can we go on a boat ride? Do you would like to go? Yeah. Of course you can go. Of course you can. Catalina took us on a boat ride along the Danube River, which is the second Like it here. We say this way, but you know you are the luckiest because the ship is turning around and you will see this side. <laughs> we took some pictures along the way. Got it! The chain bridge! Yes! Yes! We got great pictures of bridges. I've ever seen. Inside the parliament building is the real royal crown of Hungary. I wish I could wear that one. We had a royal good time pretending to be queens in Hungary. Hi, Hi. Before you go, do you would like dance again? Yeah. Okay, we go, 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 go. Say, see ya. See ya. Come and see you. Come and tell you the road. Come and see you. Come and tell you the road.